We are back with this special edition of Making Money, our town hall on capitalism and socialism. And back with us are Bianca Cunningham and Richard Wolf. They are representing the socialism side. Herman Cain is here representing the side of capitalism. And joining us now, our very own Neil Cavuto. He is the host of Coast to Coast here on the Fox Business Network. He also hosts Your World on Mondays through Fridays and Cavuto Live on Saturdays, both those shows on Fox News. And, well, if you think he works hard now, it's just who he is. At 17, Neil was the manager of Arthur Treacher's Fish and Chips while still in high school. That's yeah. right. And he actually interned at the White House under Jimmy Carter. Neil, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much. How you know, they went out of business because of me. I, <laughs> I, I ate all their food. But. So you, I don't know if you're the right person for capitalism. Or <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is Stuart okay, by the way? Is he? Uh, I gave him a shot at Jack Daniels <laughs> on the way out, and he's going to think about He wants to talk to this kid oh, over here after the show. Great, <laughs> that, that, that was a great segment. Right? It was. Hey, by the way, let's get back to the audience and their great questions. I want to start with Greg. He's a college student. So, Greg, what's on your mind? Hello. Um, so... My question for you guys is, how close can we as a nation come to achieving pure, perfect capitalism, which is no taxation, perfectly privatized um, industries, you know? Because what we do is we look at the left and say, hey, socialism, communism, how far left can we go? Well, let's look at how far right we can go, at least as the United States. Uh, Herman, I got to ask you this, you know, pose that one to you. I mean, the perfect capitalism, just as I said, there's so many different versions of socialism emerging. There's a lot of versions of capitalism that exist already from crony to everything else. I mean, is there such a thing as pure capitalism? No. There's no such thing as pure capitalism because we have taxes, because we have laws, and because we have people who cheat. But the capitalism, the imperfection in capitalism, is this far away, there's a big gap between that and the imperfections in socialism. The C in capitalism stands for competition. The S in socialism stands for state control. That's the difference. You don't have anything such as benevolent dictators. They do not exist. And even in capitalism, it has some flaws. I admit that. But that's why we have a system of laws. That's why we have the, the type of things that we have. And that's why we have a court system. We got Congress, the executive branch, and the judicial, judicial branch. Right. They are there right. to try to keep the playing field level. Richard. I want to take off from your point about there being different kinds of capitalism. The story you tell, the one without taxes, the one with perfect competition, that's what we teach in economics courses. It's a utopian dream of what might be a capitalism, and we teach it to students so they understand how far from it every actual capitalism in the history of the last 300 years has been. It's a, it's a model, it's an image. Nobody in their right mind, at least not in anything I've ever encountered, imagines it as even possible. It's an image, it's a desire. Then you measure how far from it you've gotten. But the reality is capitalism's competition, for example, when one company works against another, one of them wins, and then the other one goes out of business, and then what's left of the other one is bought by the one who wins, and pretty soon competition makes only a few companies. We know that because we live in it. So competition produces its own negation, monopoly, which then becomes a big problem, so we call in the government. But the notion of the government as somehow sitting there, rather than itself being a product of the capitalist system, System is a bizarre way of imagining the government having no causes and no shapers of what it is. And, and by the same token, Neil, when a lot of folks say, well, you know, don't forget about Venezuela, forget about Cuba, the version of cap, uh, socialism, rather, that America should embrace, uh, or uh, Norway, Denmark, uh, or other nations where the government is heavily involved, where taxes are sky high, and while there's tight income inequality, there's not the type of upward mobility. You know, you're not seeing the inventions of iPhones in Denmark. So I know they're happy people, but, you know, and maybe because they didn't invent the iPhone, but we're not seeing the kind of stuff that happens in this country. And they happen are beautiful otherwise. people. Let's yes, not forget absolutely. that. But I will say that I don't believe uh, capitalism in its perfect sense ever was without taxation in, in that, in that right. dream scenario. I will say this, for all the capitalism's flaws, and we report on it all the time, it, it, it's still the best alternative out there. No one and no type of a system, uh, our own included, has enriched the world to the degree and rescued countries and rebuilt war-tattered Europe that capitalism did, that we did. And I, I think it's... 
it, it can be seen as a left or right issue, and you're right to raise it, but the opportunities presented dwarf what is presented. No socialist society has created the things that we've created. No, no government-run society has done for people what we have done for people. No society has created the opportunities and provided right. a rags-to-riches type of existence for as many people as our system. Is it flawed? Yes. Do we have extremes? Absolutely. Do we overdo it and we have the Enrons or the Tycos and examples of people who abuse the privilege? Absolutely. Um, and we regulate that and we police that. And we want to make sure that we have better standards for medicine and food. All that comes with it. Comes out of your taxes, too, by the way. But that is an obligation, I think, that capitalism happily meets. Right. And, of course, it all gets down to the fact none of these systems are perfect because I think human beings are not perfect. Right. I want to go to Donna for our next question. Donna? Um, why are Democrat politicians pro-socialism and glamorizing it when they have seen throughout history the destruction that comes from it? There's a reason why people are fleeing other countries for the opportunity to live in America. You know, Bianca, I want to, oh, I want to pose that to you. I've studied uh, the African nations that embraced socialism upon independence. Now, there were a lot of reasons for that. They didn't, you know, the, the people who colonized those countries, they looked at them as capitalists. Certainly, they didn't want to embrace that. The Soviet Union looked like it was on its way up. But I think it hurt those nations severely, severely, set them back decades. Uh, why has the entire Democratic Party, to a degree, uh, embraced a, one form of socialism or another? Some are reluctant to say it, but Medicare for all, paying off all student debts. Do you think that that's the new party, that's going to be the new Democratic Party? So I will just first say that I don't believe the Democratic Party is embracing socialism. That's why we have our organization, Democratic Socialists of America, which is pushing them to hold the agenda of the people and to be responsive to the issues that we care about. Neither party is serving is it everyday because the, it's, it's because the elites on both sides yes. benefit so much from, from the status quo? So you think maybe they're just giving it lip service? I think it's just lip service. I think that they're not interested in having a real conversation. I think that they'll stifle the conversation every chance that they but get. But can't we have a conversation? conversations just about math, um, money in, money out. And if you make promises that can't be paid for, eventually you run out of money, right? And I, I think no matter how passionate, and I don't give re Republicans a pass on this, they build deficits just as, you know, uh, quickly as, as did Democrats. I, I, I just think, though, that uh, what's incumbent upon all these candidates uh, running for president and say, how are you going to pay for that? Because that's on you. That's on your generation. And I'm fine. I think uh, I told Charles beforehand, as long as my Social Security is okay and you're paying into it, I'm okay with it. I got worried when I heard that the birth rate's at a 32-year low. <laughs> but I, I, I think we just got to do basic math, and I don't think any of those candidates are. I, Richard, I'll let you do that, but I want Bianca to respond to that, because how are all these ideas that you want are going to be, how are they going to be paid for? So I think the real question is why we're complacent with people, with children across this country starving, with people being in massive debt coming out of school and having no choice but to sell your wage for our social But that's not the wage, issue. Then how are you going to pay your for labor? It? So to address that, to, so if that's a wrong do, you want rectified, how are you going to So what we'd like to do is bring democracy to every aspect of our lives, including our workplaces uh, more so. Unions are the thing that is going to push these people at the top to share the profits with the workers who are generating that wealth. Bianca, you are shifting the subject. I'm sorry, I can't be quiet, Charles. You are shifting the subject, which is exactly how you get back to these arguments about socialism. You're going at it based upon uh, emotion. You're going at it based upon, here's an example. Allow me to finish. I'll let you finish. You're going at, the, at emotion. You keep talking about people who don't have food to eat and they got to do this and that. We can find those examples everywhere in this country. So what mm. I'm simply saying is to go back to the fundamental question, which is what we started before you shifted the subject, let's go back to the fact that every one of these presidential Democratic wannabes has at least one socialist idea. You want to know why they get away with it? Because the general public doesn't understand creeping socialism into our society oh, Okay, culture. I'll give you that. But, Richard, we also should acknowledge, though, that the general public is becoming increasingly dissatisfied with capitalism as well. Capitalism is doing something wrong to have this many people become this disenchanted with it and for us to be doing this special today. I'm not going to follow Herman in insulting the general public, so I'm not going to go in that direction. Uh, I think Why the general you public... Why me? Excuse me, sir. I'm in the middle of talking, okay? That's why I'm not... There's more coming. 
I am interested in trying to find a solution to this question. Where is it going to be paid for? And for me, the solution is not having the government come in. This is the old idea. This is what socialists in the past thought. It's not where I'm going. It's not where I'm coming from. I want to go where Bianca started to go with the answer to the question. Change the way businesses are organized in this society. That's where the problem starts. Every business is a home, let me finish, of non-democracy. A terrible small group of people at the top, the board of directors, the owner, make all the key decisions. What to produce, how to produce, where to produce, and what to do with the work that everybody contributed to. That's not fair, and we shouldn't be surprised that the people at the top give themselves the lion's share of the rewards at the end. Therein is the problem. Socialism, let me finish, socialism is, the, for me, is a program to democratize the workplace. It should have been done at the beginning of the history of the United States. We're 200 years late, but better late than never, and that can solve our problem. Well, the great news is that if we do it now, we're at the peak of our earnings, right? We're a $21 trillion economy. The stock market's near an all-time high, and jobs are going up. Neil, I want to say thank you very thank much. You very, very for much. appreciate it.